Hey everybody, Music Therapy Lives here. I've got um, Ben Coombs in the background here on his live stream earlier tonight uh, with Dave of Dave's World of Fun Stuff. And um, while that's going on in the background, because I missed uh, a lot of it because uh, we went and did a Zoom uh, family conference with my wife and uh, her family in Peru. Let me take this off so you can see me better. And uh, that was really nice, uh, getting to chat with them, but I missed most of uh, Ben's show. So while I'm listening to him in the background here and Dave uh, of Dave's World of Fun Stuff, I'm going to do this uh, pedal board, continue with this pedal board uh, job. So basically, I wanted to show you guys, like, one of the things I highly recommend in when you're doing a pedal board is if you get one that has, like, a painted finish like this one has, um, you don't want to leave this uh, shiny painted surface uh, just shiny like that because then the pedal tape won't stick to it very well. So and what I typically do is I don't use uh, the dual lock mushroom style uh, pedal grip tape that heavy duty stuff uh, on um, on the, the board. I use the fuzzy style because I think that using that grip tape it grips almost too much sometimes with the pedals and um from what i've seen at least and, and i'm not by any means an expert at this you guys but um you know if you have certain pedals that are really expensive like i might even take this hx stomps here stops hx stomp and if i do put this on the pedal board which i probably will i'm probably going to want to even zip tie that if uh if at all possible if it, if it works out but i think uh you know if you properly placed uh, a dual lock uh, like pieces of tape will do the trick and I do it in this manner if you didn't catch my previous video um, catch that previous video about how to you know put this kind of grip tape on so I use this dual lock style kind of mushroom style tape this is a heavy duty uh, pedal board tape or magic tape or whatever you want to call it some of it call it uh, super tape um, there's so many names of it you can find it online um, but you definitely want to get the kind that has, if you can see how it has this like white glue backing, um, this stuff is not going to peel off at all easily, you know. And then another thing you can do sometimes if you do need to peel it off is get a blow dryer and heat it up, right, if you need to peel it off. But generally, um, I'll also use this in, in the case of like I have this older tape here, I'll, I'll use the heat gun on this too, to, or not heat gun, but this uh, blow dryer. To kind of warm up the glue a little bit so that when it does stick down it's going to stick stick on there real good right um you definitely want to let it set at least turn that off because that's kind of noisy you can't hear my voice you want to let that at least set for a good 24 hours before you start sticking tape and stuff on like sticking pedals on there because um you don't want to you know have it like if you're trying to move them around you don't want it to peel off and another thing that people uh, recommend, uh, mostly like that pedal show, that guy Dan over at that pedal show's channel, recommends when you're, once you have the grip tape or the fuzzy side tape down on the board, um, definitely, you know, do your layout with a piece of paper or something over that or a piece of fabric or whatever you can. Um, in this case, this thing is at an angle so pedals might slide. So you might want to just put something underneath it temporarily until you know so it's level so you can keep things from sliding around and that way you can get your like pedal layout kind of figured out before you actually stick it down on there you know um, but this this triangle method of doing it works great you always want to do it from the button side pointy side at the button side so that when you lift off you lift off in this angle you know you start with the pointy side first and you lift off like that and that will help you, you know, from having problems being able to lift off your pedals without it uh, ripping up or lifting off this tape. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the top here. And I washed my hands. I wanted to make sure that my hands are really clean. And I'm going to, you know, start from, from left to, or from right to left. And I have these uh, already pre-cut and set up here to go one after the other. Oh. Actually, I had a feeling there was something going on. So this one's at the top. And I already pre-cut them. I'm not going to peel it all the way back because I don't want to have a problem with uh, it sticking to itself or something. So that's another bit of advice I would highly recommend. Now, this also, and, and I'm stretching it as I'm going to make sure 
that I have it stuck down once and I don't stick it down, lift up and stick it down twice. So once should be good. And in this, this case, I did make it a little longer, which is fine. I'm going to just trim it off over here with some scissors. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and press down on that real good. Okay. Then I might even do this again, heat it up a little bit. I'm not using high heat, I'm using the low heat setting. And this may not be necessary, but I'm doing it because this 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 uh, tape here is kind of older, and I'm using it because um, I have it, and I might as well use it if I have it, right? So that's basically the method I, I think is going to work the best here. I mean, I could uh, continue here in silence and do this while you guys watch, but I think that will be boring. So I'm just going to end the video here, basically. Um, that's the method that I, I highly recommend. And I'm going to do another video of how this all looks, um, you know, when it's done. I might even do some other videos in between, right? Um, how I'm hooking up, for example, the uh, one spot underneath it. Somebody did recommend to me to try to, um, you know, put it to one side rather than the center because, um, you know, you have the you have the power port um, right there on the one side, right? But it actually doesn't line up that perfectly in that sense. Um, so I could. But there is already a bracket that it came with that kind of works well to set it up in the center position. And even though it's not going over it, I'm going to use zip ties on this one. That riser does put it so that the power is in the, just in the right position to connect the cable to it. Um, so I'm going to probably use that with some, uh, some Velcro also. That's another idea, just to kind of keep it in place and keep it from rattling. Um, and, and maybe zip ties. Um, so that way I can access it when I turn it upside down like this, I can access it and um, you know get to it easily enough. Though the advice that was given was wise in the sense that if I do move over to the side, I'll lose some space if I move it over to this side. Um, but then I could probably put more pedals underneath here on a platform of some sort if I decide to do that. If I decide to put a platform under this and use some under the pedal kind of space here. Um, so I haven't 100% decided on that. And if I do do that, I'll need to remove this. So I'm going to have to cut away some of this um, tape here where the screws are uh, set for this, this guy right here. That's not a problem. That should be easy to be able to do that with a knife uh, with a sharp exacto knife or some kind of a blade. Um, so we'll see how it all works out, but so far this is uh, this is this step of my pedal board build. Just wanted to share it with you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, Music Therapy Labs out.